In this video, I will present you event-based programming through an example. A typical example are graphical interfaces. They strongly rely on event programming and the origin is X. X is a window manager developed at Xerox Parks. Park means Palo Alto Research Center. It was the main research center of the Xerox company and it was developed in the 70s. Here you find how the first versions of X could look like. It was massively adopted in the 80s and to be honest Apple had an important role. So uh, after Unix the first machine to really adopt it as a principle was the Lisa in 1983 but the Lisa was not sold very much and most people had to wait for an extra year in 1984 to see the Macintosh that was introducing a new release of this window system that make its success. Then uh, Microsoft uh, opened uh, its own Windows system etc etc and everything was on the track and now uh, even in our smart devices we have such systems. As I told you in the previous video these programs just react to events so there is no need to have a sort of loop, is there something for me? No. Is there something for me? No. Is there something for me? No. It, it has no meanings. You are wasting CPU for nothing. So the idea is when you start such programs is just to configure the handlers to point out what you want to be executed when some uh, signal occurs. Here we consider a mouse. There are so far uh, two signals we are interested in. The first one, sig move, is a signal that occurs every move, every time you move the mouse. You may have, if you have a, a long movement, then it will occur several times. It's not a problem. And you have a second signal that occurs uh, when the left button here is uh, pressed. So, what I state in my program, first that I want to associate to a sig move. UPD pointer which is the address of a routine with the appropriate instructions and I want to associate to SIG L the draw menu procedure and then I want to do nothing because there is nothing else to do. So I wait for an event so I said to the operating system I have nothing else to do please just wake me up when the corresponding event occurs. So that's all. That's all because the event manager integrated in the operating system will handle everything and of course this saves CPU, this saves energy in the situation of uh, smart devices or embedded systems because uh, anyway if the operating system has another task to perform it can allocate the processor to this task or if you are in an embedded system, uh, it can decrease the uh, activity of the processor, reduce the clock, for example, until something that needs uh, some computation occurs. So let's have a look on how we could manage the mouse pointer, because the idea is you can imagine that when I will move my mouse, the pointer will follow on the screen. So let's imagine that we have two variables h and v that store the absolute coordinates of the pointer in the screen. So usually on the screen 0, 0 is on top uh, left and here you have the x axis and here you have the uh, y axis or in my example this will be the position recorded in the h variable and this would be the position recorded in the v variable. Of course you can change, you can decide that uh, your origin is somewhere else, it's just a question of convention. Then uh, when uh, uh, the system generates a signal you can find into two variables delta h and delta v 
you can find the change of position since the last event. So, for example, I move my mouse, there is a displacement, uh, then the signal is emitted and it says, okay, it's uh, on the H axis, it's uh, 20 pixels, on the V axis, it's 40 pixels. Then uh, you have a primitive, we don't care about how it works, that allows you to delete the pointer, okay, uh, and you pass the position of the pointer as argument. There is another primitive, draw pointer, that allows you to draw the pointer and you pass to this primitive uh, the coordinates of the pointer where you want it to be drawn. And you have a draw menu primitive that will draw the menu uh, at the position you pass into arguments. So let's just program these two handlers, UPD pointer, for update pointer. So here, obviously what you do, you delay the pointer at its current position, then you update its current position, then you draw the pointer at its new position, and you wait for an event. You have nothing else to do. You wait for the next event. It can be another move, it can be a press on the left button. So it's very easy. And you clearly see that this will be executed only when some move of the mouse is operated. Now let's have a look on the second handler primitive, draw menu. Okay, so the first thing you do is you delete the pointer because otherwise you will draw the menu on top of the pointer, so it will disappear. Then you set up the coordinates of the menu, the top left uh, corner, uh, that are at the location of uh, the pointer in those two variables, PMV and PMH. Then you invoke the primitive draw menu that will draw the menu at its current position. And then you invoke the primitive draw pointer that will, on top of the menu, show the pointer. And then you do something interesting because the fact that the menu is displayed must change the behavior of the interface. So you have now another button that can be used, which is the middle button. And if you press this button, you have SIGM that is issued. Okay, and SIGM means you press the middle button, means you activate an item in the menu. So it means that you have a primitive called active item that will deduce from the position of the menu which item is being selected and that will operate the corresponding function. So here I enable SIGM uh, with active item. And SIGL will change its function. SIGL must delete the menu. So you associate with SIGL this primitive that is a fast menu that deletes the menu. And once you've done this, you say again to the operating system, I have nothing else to do, please call me back when some event occurs for me. And there will be three events, another SIGDEP, SIGM, which is now captured, and SIGL, which is still captured, but in a different way than with the previous primitive. So let's now have a look on how uh, the execution is performed. So here, let's imagine that on my screen I click on the mouse, so this generates CG. CG generates the execution of my handler, and this handler executes this primitive and so starts to draw the menu. But let's imagine now I, I'm moving my, my mouse very quickly, and I'm moving my mouse before the handler here has finished his execution. And let's imagine that this event preempts the previous one. So I have a rerouting to the second handler. The second handler deletes the pointer. Okay, it was already deleted, so no problem. Changes the position of the pointer, H and V, and then draw the pointer. It draws the pointer in the new position, 
and say wait event. And when the operating system gets back to the execution, it says, oh, there is another handler that still missed some instruction, and you execute the rest. But here you draw again the pointer. So you draw the pointer here, but the pointer was also drawn here. It was displaced. So you end up with two pointers, which is obviously one too many. One that will keep tracking when you move, okay, and the other one will remain here. So you see, typically, there is a problem between these pointers, between the position of the menu, etc., etc., and it's obviously not correct. The problem comes from the fact that there is one shared variable, and so there is a conflict on the access to these shared variable, uh, h and v. So when one handler changes the value of this variable, there is a side effect, and the other handler benefits from it. Okay, and this occurred with this change of position that makes the the, the pointer be drawn twice. So there is a need to synchronize uh, this event. In fact, if the first handler were not interrupted while the second one is being executed, the problem would not have been observed. So we have to force this, and a way to force this in a, a such system is to disarm events, to delay this event, to say, okay, uh, I want this event not to occur now, I just want to finish my treatment, and then you can trigger this event. And there is another way to do it, uh, is to use synchronization mechanisms. Basically, we will more use the second mechanisms with iOS than the first one. Okay. So just have a quick look, you just have here these two new instructions, disarm event, that will just stop uh, the appearance of the event, and before leaving the way to the operating system, I can rearm uh, the event, and, and here I do the same. So that there will not be any interleaving possible between the instruction of this handler and the instruction of this other handler. So it's safe. Okay, as a conclusion, I just show you the basic principle of the event-based programming. Uh, it's a good example because it's simple, it shows you basic and common mechanisms, it shows you basic and common problems to solve, uh, and of course you will face such programs at a higher level, and as I mentioned, you will not use mechanisms such as disarmament of interruptions or rearmament of interruption, you will use synchronization mechanisms uh, embedded into uh, API high that uh, are a way to interact with uh, frameworks. Thank you very much for your attention. See you later.